Despite economic fallout from the pandemic, global investment in renewable energy has grown. About 90 percent of all new energy generated this year has been powered by wind and hydropower, setting a new world record. That's according to the International Energy Agency's Renewables 2020 report. Hamy Bahar is the lead author on that report and a senior analyst at the International Energy Agency. He joins me now from Paris. Hamy, welcome. Thanks very much for being with us. So the pandemic has, of course, led to some severe economic setbacks. How has the renewable energy sector overcome that, as well as the logistical challenges that have resulted? Thank you very much for inviting me, and it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, let's start with the uh, energy demand, what happened globally, what will happen in 2020. At the IEA, we see that global energy demand to decline by 5% this year. Just to give you an idea that this is seven times more than when we saw during the financial crisis in 2008 and 9. Um, this is a big, unprecedented decline. However, we see that uh, renewables are behaving totally opposite uh, direction than this decline. And uh, we expect renewables in electricity generation to increase by 7%. And while we all expect uh, a vaccine uh, to be widely available to get out of this crisis, it shows that renewables already had their vaccine and they are almost immune uh, to this crisis. And why did that happen? Uh, first of all, most of the renewable plants have long-term contracts, so they are not affected by the price declines uh, uh, or demand declines of, of that we saw. Uh, secondly, uh, they continue to generate electricity because they are cheaper uh, and they are available uh, to, to generate electricity. And in terms of the logistical challenges, I must say that uh, renewable energy technologies, especially wind and solar, adopted very fast to the new normal conditions of uh, social distancing and quickly uh, uh, picked up the construction activity after an, uh, a bit slowdown in March and April. We saw this in multiple countries and regions such as, uh, uh, such as China, United States and the European Union. One important point though about uh, uh, renewables as a whole uh, uh, renewables in electricity, wind and solar are uh, doing very well, uh, but uh, biofuels used in transport and uh, heating purposes uh, saw an important decline due to economic activity. So are all those reasons you just laid out why renewable energy has been so attractive to investors and why the sector has actually seen so much growth this year? The reason behind this is, uh, I will say, first of all, it's a safe haven investment. Renewable energy investments uh, bring uh, stable returns to investors. And we looked at several indicators in this report uh, to prove the resilience of renewables. We looked at more than 100 uh, company performances uh, over the last year uh, in the stock markets, and we saw that uh, overall energy sector since the beginning of the year uh, including oil, gas, uh, all the parts of the energy sector, stock market performance already declined by about 40 percent since the beginning of the year. While we saw wind and solar companies uh, doubling and almost tripling uh, their performance. The reason behind this is twofold, in our opinion. The first one is that they have a, a very sound financial uh, situation, uh, which is proven by this crisis. They saw a decline in March and quickly picked up and recovered the losses. The second, uh, I will say, the future prospects uh, uh, of investors about renewable demand growth. Uh, everybody, I think, in the investment community, with all the announcements by the government, see that uh, we will see an increasing growth of renewables, and it's proven. And another indicator that we looked were the how much governments procured renewables in 2020 despite the crisis, and we saw that uh, the procurement was higher than even last year by the governments. Uh, not only governments are interested to procure more uh, renewable electricity, but also companies are ready to invest and bid to these uh, to these procurements. Well, you mentioned the strong performance of companies um, when it comes to wind and solar. Are those the types of renewable energy that have been in demand the most? Yes, exactly. So wind and solar are, the, are leading the growth in, in, in multiple ways. 
uh, and uh, you also saw in your in your clip, 90% uh, of the capacity increase in global energy system, electricity system, will come from renewables, and half of this will be just solar PV. This is an incredible number and significantly higher than we saw over the past few years. And uh, uh, obviously, solar uh, is the king of the uh, uh, new king, I will say, of the of the renewable electricity systems, and uh, and they basically offer. Uh, an incredible cheap power uh, uh, and uh, uh, cheaper than uh, many fossil fuel alternatives uh, in many parts of the world. Uh, that's why we expect solar and wind uh, uh, to lead this, this expansion. And uh, we will see uh, in 2020, despite the crisis, uh, renewable power plants will be higher uh, than we saw in 2019. And even in 2021, we will see a further rebound of both uh, solar and wind uh, breaking record levels of growth. What about the fossil fuel industry? Is it expected to rebound after the pandemic, or could this shift to renewable energy become more permanent? Well, this is a very good question. Uh, if we start with 2020, we expect all fossil fuel demand to decline. Uh, I repeat again, while renewables will increase, all fossil fuel demand will decline. And most, most of the hit is comes from oil. Uh, obviously, we expect oil demand to decline 8 to 9% in 2020. Obviously, the mobility is significantly restricted. We have an uh, economic decline in most parts of the world. Uh, similarly, coal and gas demand is going to decline in 2020 uh, uh, at unprecedented level, I will say, uh, compared to the uh, past uh, uh, probably decades and decades. And as a result, we expect CO2 emissions to decline by 7%. Obviously, this is the good news in terms of the emissions, but the reason why emissions will decline uh, is not a good news because we are going through a health crisis. Uh, we don't expect uh, uh, all fossil fuels to rebound uh, in the coming years. Uh, first of all, let's talk about coal. Uh, we expect coal demand uh, uh, slightly increase maybe in the 2020-2022 period, but towards longer term, uh, we expect a steady decline. Uh, and obviously, uh, uncertainty remains uh, in the oil demand. It really depends on how mobility picks up uh, in the coming uh, months and, and years and how behavioral changes affect the oil demand. Sounds like a shifting energy landscape. Hemi Bahar, Hemi, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for inviting me.